in our session this morning, let us have some knowledge about section one, the practice of civil engineering. For one that one general of our section one, the practice of civil engineering, this manual addresses the procurement of civil engineering services for a quality project. Quality by definition is one satisfactorily meeting both the expectations of the client or employer and the requirements of the project. It requires professional dedication, effort, adequate time for investigation, planning, and innovation fair compensation, and appropriate authority and responsibility. It cannot be achieved only by the effort at the beginning or end of a project. These efforts must be conscious, continuous, and consistent throughout all the pieces of a project. Quality results from team effort and is measured by the degree of satisfaction of all parties involved. This manual is dedicated to advancing both the understanding and quality of the practice of civil engineering. The development of this manual is actually dedicated on the basis that civil engineering services are accomplished in a manner meeting the standard of care of the profession of civil engineering. Then let's talk also about the professional responsibility. Bilang mga civil engineer, ano ba yung tinatawag nating professional responsibility? I think by common sense, siyempre, ito yung makalikat tayo ng mga structure na talagang matitibay at maasaan, ligtas sa paggamit ang publiko, may bigay natin ng tama ang ating serbisyo sa mga mamayang Pilipino o sa ibang mga mamayan din sa ibang mga karating bansa. Depende yan kung sino yung ating mga pinagsisilbihan o sino yung ating mga kliyente. The standard of practice is for civil engineering to be given responsibility for studying Katungkulan mo mag pa, tagdagan pa ang kalaman ng sagayon ay mapaganda pa ang serbisyo mo sa kapwa. Conceiving, designing, observing, construction, and assisting in the programming for operating and maintaining engineering works. Other services that are unforeseen initially may be required of the civil engineering or the civil engineer during the evolution of your project. The health, safety, well-being, and comfort of the public in using a facility and the ultimate facility cost all depend to a considerable extent on how well members of the project team fulfill their professional and contractual responsibilities. The civil engineer therefore has obligations as trustees to the public interest as well as faithful to the private interests of clients. Kailangan what quality ang ating serbisyo sa ating kapwa. Yan ang pinakanumero ng responsibilidad natin bilang mga linyero. Kailangan tinitiyak din natin ang kaligtasan ng ating kapwa sa ating mga lika o sa ating mga structure na itinatayo. Successfully fulfilling these responsibilities required candor, mutual trust, and effective communication and understanding between the civil engineer and the client. Only in this way can a professional relationship be established and a successful project implemented. So bilang mga eninyero, kailangan alam natin ang ating responsibilidad bilang mga eninyero. Civil engineers shall conduct themselves in a highly professional manner and serve as faithful trustees or agents of their client or employers. 
Civil engineers are therefore bound by the fundamental canons of ethics contained in this manual. Care and protection of the environment, dapat isa rin yan sa ating binibigyan lang ma ma malaking puntos sa ating mga structure na ginagawa. Actually, ito yung paramount ng civil engineers work engagement na tinatawag natin ang pag-iingat at pagbibigay ng proteksyon sa ating environment. Nandiyan dyan naman ang DNR para ating makatulong sa ating mga construction projects. Civil engineers must always strive to maintain the highest standard of ethical professional practice in their dealing with client employees, competitors, and the community. <coughs> For the client-civil engineer relationships, paano ba tayo makakalika ng harmonious relationship between client and civil engineer relationships? Simple lang, tayong mga engineer, kailangan natin maging honest sa ating mga kliyente. Kailangan ang ating mga serbisyo ay satisfy ang ating mga kliyente. Ang sagayon ay magustuhan nila ang ating trabaho and then maging harmonious ang relationship ng bawat isa. May iwasan ang mga conflicts, iwasan din ang maging corrupt, and so on and so forth. Many engineering works are conceived, designed, and constructed through the efforts of civil engineers employed in governmental agencies or in industries. Maaari kasi ng isang ininiero ay empleyado ng gobyerno o na isang private company or construction firm. Other engineering projects come to fruition through the efforts of civil engineering firms engaged for a specific project or program by public agencies or private clients. Many public and private entities of necessity rely on civil engineers as their employees. Independent civil engineering firms are also relied upon to accomplish projects which require special expertise beyond the normal capabilities of the client. And what else? More recently, clients have been utilizing new concepts, such as program management and design build to implement projects. Definition and explanation of proper relationship between civil engineers and their public and private clients are important objectives of this manual. These are discussed below and you have to see the Annex A for sample contracts of services. Now, what are the obligations of the civil engineer? The obligations of the civil engineer include the following. First, the civil engineer shall perform scope of the services as stated in Section 2. The civil engineer shall exercise reasonable seal, care, and diligence in the performance of, of his obligations. The civil engineer shall act independent and as required by the contract, perform with the necessary skills and professional judgment when required to certify, decide, or exercise discretion between the client and a third party with whom the client has a contract. The civil engineer is authorized to act as the client's faithful agent when required by only as implied in section two or implied in the contract adopted for the project. When aware of any matters which may well change or change the scope of the services, the civil engineer shall give written notice to the client containing particulars of the changes. For specified state services, the civil engineer shall not initiate or proceed with any subsequent stage of the services without the approval of the client. When required, the civil engineer shall direct and cooperate with all other professionals and integrate their work where applicable into that being undertaken by the civil engineer and other professionals, but shall not be professionally liable to their work. The eighth one, the civil engineer may recommend specialist suppliers and or contractors to design, 
and execute certain parts of the works, in which case the civil engineer shall coordinate the design of such parts or parts with the overall design of the works, but he shall be relieved of all responsibility for the design, manufacture, installation, and performance of any such part or parts of the work. The civil engineer shall not be liable for acts of negligence, default, or omission by such persons or person. The civil engineer shall notify the client of any interest. The civil engineer as which may significantly conflict with the interest of client under their contract. Now we also have the obligations for the client or obligations of the client. The client shall pay the civil engineer for his services, definitely. The amount of fees and expenses set out in or determined in their agreement. The client shall provide the civil engineer within reasonable time. It does not result in delay to the provision of the services. All information required by the civil engineer in the performance of the services and a decision in writing on matters properly prepared to the client in writing. The client shall cooperate with the civil engineer and shall not interfere with or the obstruct the proper performance of these services. The client shall, as soon as possible, as practicable, decide to enable the civil engineer to enter the site and inspect facilities needed in the performance of his services. The client shall arrange for the provision of services from other professionals or others as may be required and bear all costs. When the civil engineer is required to administer the work of other professionals or other third parties who are directly contracted by the client, or when the civil engineer is required to act as an engineer to the contractor or engineer to the contract or any contract on behalf of the client, then all instructions by the client shall be given through the civil engineer. When aware of any matter which will change or has changed the scope of the civil engineer's services, the client shall notify in writing within seven days the civil engineer containing as far as is practicable the particulars of the change. And the liability of the civil engineer and the client the civil engineer shall only be liable to pay damages to the client arising out of or in connection with their agreement if a breach of duty of care is established against the civil engineer. The client shall only be liable to pay damages to the civil engineer if a breach of the client's duty to the civil engineer is established against the client. The solution of any conflict arising from the agreement between the civil engineer and the client shall be done by giving preference to the process of arbitration. Establishment of the breach of duty on the part of the civil engineer and that of the breach of the client's duty to the civil engineer shall be undertaken by a third party arbitrator, mutually acceptance to the client and the civil engineer. Now let's talk about the limitation of civil or civil engineer's responsibility. The civil engineer shall have no responsibility or liability for cause, loss or damage of whatsoever nature arising from any errors in or omission from data, documents, plans, design or specifications not prepared by the civil engineer or other personnel under the direct control of the civil engineer and arising from any hack or omission or lack of performance or any negligent or fraudulent act or omission by the client or any employee or agent of the client, other consultants, contractor, or suppliers. Notwithstanding any recommendation or lack of recommendation made by the civil engineer to the client, the civil engineer shall not be held to have made any warranty or promise as to the suitability, competence, or performance of any other consultant, contractor, supplier, or other third party. The civil engineer shall not be responsible for the techniques, methods, programs, sequences, or procedures adopted by any contractor or other third party responsible for executing any aspects of the project. 
or for their performance on time. Their failure to carry out the work in accordance with any contract documents or for any other acts or omissions. Kailangan talaga kung ano lang yung nasa plano, yun lang ang susundi ng contractor at kung ano yung nasa dokumento. Thank you and God bless.